the fourth summer tournament from 16th and 17th of may was won by ahan mehta with a score of 5.5 points out of 6 so let's let's rediscover his journey throughout the tournament how his games were how his fight was what were the challenges he faced let's go through all his six games starting with sai vibhansh his first round opponent and ending on gajanan his last round game so i have i have also not seen the games much before all these six games so it will also be something that i am seeing for the first time so we'll use engine only if we have some doubts about the position let's start with the first game how does this game go first round saturday 11 am ahan plays e4 sai vibhansh replies e5 knight f3 knight c6 bishop c4 bishop c5 we have a giko piano c3 knight f6 d4 the main line of ha ah, so this is like the tricky line of giko piano the main line is pawn takes back and the game goes bishop b4 bishop d2 bishop takes knight takes and then d5 pawn takes knight takes castles castles but what ahan plays here is the main line instead of recapturing the pawn back he intercedes with the pawn e5 knight moves to g4 as a slight mistake because the knight is out of play so those who know this opening will know that black must play pawn d5 this is not something you can find out over the board this is something you have to know basically e5 d5 is the only response that keeps it a good game for black but after any other move knight e4 would be the worst move because then the knight gets trapped almost that will d5 and f5 bishop f5 because of d5 then we simply recapture with n percent and the knight hanging so knight e4 would be the bad square and uh, knight g4 played by sai vibhansh is also bad because the knight simply out of play now why can simply play h3 and knight has to go back to h6 knight takes pawn there we have a blunder isn't it it's a full piece isn't it yeah knight takes knight knight takes e5 and the bishop just drops back so white is ahan is up by a full knight in the position and he just exchanges off things bishop b4 is a mistake why ah there is uh, bishop f7 king takes and then queen b3 check like bishop f7 king takes and then queen b3 check taking back the piece king can on castle is one option what did ahan do he played pawn a3 which is also fine bishop a5 queen h5 it's a double attack attacking the f7 square and the bishop the best move here is pawn d5 stopping both threats bishop queen f6 and the bishop is gone so this is basically a very short affair the game gets over in what uh, 16 moves rook e1 check king d8 is just a blunder because the king has to go here he goes here bishop d5 just wins the queen so that was basically a complete failure on black's part he just let a hand run through from the opening till the end so it was basically that opening surprise that got a hand this win in this first round let's see what his second round game was all about he was black in the game he was playing against satan who was 1052 rated e4 e5 knight f3 knight c6 bishop c4 bishop c5 c3 knight f6 d4 pawn takes pawn takes so atan plays the main line of kiko piano bishop check bishop d2 bishop takes knight takes and d5 this d5 move is very important because if you simply castle then it allows the sender to white i can just play e5 and it's a great position for white so it's important the black plays d5 challenging the sender and then after castle castle the game goes on you have ideas like bishop g4 or knight f4 so rook e1 bishop g4 played pawn h3 bishop back the pin still stays so why can actually just move the queen somewhere queen b3 or queen c2 actually because this knight is defended by this knight so bishop takes knight pawn doesn't have to take knight and take back queen b3 played knight a5 so queen b3 may not have been the best square for the queen he moves knight takes so there was a win here according to the engine pawn c6 where should the queen move let's say queen a4 b5 So c6. If queen goes to c4, we just play b6, I suppose. Wait, what? Yeah, yeah. We play b6, but first we play bishop takes. So this knight moves away from defending this guy, and then we play b6. 
and the queen has to move to a3 and we just take the piece for free so that's what the engine shows but ahan did not see that he just took the bishop knight takes bishop queen takes back c6 it's still a simple position for ahan simple good position but if a bishop takes knight takes knight f6 so this game is becoming a little better for white better for atan look at the control of the e file h6 queen b3 rook b8 and the rook enters the second seventh rank this could become bad for ahan and he tries to get out of it by queen b6 queen takes pawn takes and knight e5 might not have been the best move okay he plays rook d7 knight f6 back rook e7 knight knight d5 rook d7 of course ahan does not want to draw the game he is the higher seed and it's the second round of the tournament he plays pawn f6 nice knight, knight goes to g6 rook moves to d8 here the obvious move should be rook oh wait rook cannot come to d7 sorry knight check okay knight takes and now ah here obviously white should have taken with the rook right just a great position for white i mean rook takes rook has to be played because rook is threatening g7 rook takes rook Rook takes back, and this rook is completely passive. White rook is covering the seventh rank. It's almost a winning position for white. But uh, this is where Atan makes a basic error. He just plays rook takes rook. The life journey of a rook is not to cover the e, e file or d file. First, you cover the file with double, both the rooks. Then one of them enters, and the other one enters. And once you get them onto seventh rank, there is no stopping them. Like for example, this position, if this black rook is not here, it was somewhere here. That means this position is over. It's white who wins if this was the position. That's how dominating the rook can be once they enter the seventh rank. But here in the game, Atan just takes with this rook, the d rook, and it's just an equal position. Rook has to retreat, and now mass exchanges follow. The end game has to be slightly better for black because the king is more active. King c3, king goes. Chasing the pawns, pawn g5. If played properly, this could be a draw for white. But let's see where white goes wrong. Okay, h5. What should white do? B4. Done. G4. H4 seems to be the mistake. We just have to take pawn takes pawn takes. What could go wrong? Right. So we just place h4. Now f5. A4. It's a complicated position. Complicated pawn and game. Pawn takes. Han has got a lot of time to get here. Han has a lot of time. Pawn takes. Now it's basically king c5, king b6, and king takes, and then you need three more moves. So one, two, three, and six. Three more. Six moves to win for white. What can black do by the way? One, two, three, four, five. How is it okay for black? Black plays up four. King c5 played by white. It's an interesting game. I missed this during the tournament. I ju I'm just seeing it now. Pawn g3 seems to be a mistake. Now black needs one, two, three, four, five, six to queen. White needs one, two, three, four, five. Still looking good for white, right? How is it winning for black? That's a little tricky. King d3. Let's see. King b6. King e2. So what we calculated is happening. King takes f2. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six moves. This just needs one, two, three, four. Still needs six moves. So I guess both sides will play at the same time. A6. Ha. Ah, so why black is getting all these pawns? <laughs> That's the difference. So after both sides queen. Pawn c7. Queens. Queens. In the queen end game. Black is up by a pawn, up by a pawn, and uh, he'll probably get this pawn, and there'll be two connected pass pawns. That is why the position is winning for Black. This was a tough challenge for him, but he came through it. Queen check, King D7. Ah, the other pawn falls, and now Black just takes to exchange off these queens, and it's a win for Black. How does he exchange it off? Okay, White tries to stop that exchange. But black just pushes. Queen blocks it. Moves. 
stopping the pawn from going forward. This Atan is fighting. Queen moves. Queen check. Queen d8. You can see some nice maneuvering moves from Ahan. King moves up. Now the pawn is going forward again. Ah, this is where uh, Ahan made the blunder. Queen f2 forces the exchange of queens. So one thing, the last thing that white wants is the exchange of queens because the pawn in game is just winning for black, for Han. So Han won the second round game like this. It was a tough fight and it was won by Han. Let's see the third round. He was facing Yatin. Let's see what happened. d4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, bishop c5, c3, knight f6, d4. Again, we see the tricky line of Algico Piano and many people are not aware of it. Even if they've learned it in classes or outside, they're still not remembering it. That is a problem. Black has to play pawn d5. Otherwise, it's just a bad position. Now, queen e2, pawn d5, pawn takes pawn and pass in. Queen takes is just a full piece. Yatin just dropped a full piece. Bishop e6, bishop takes, pawn, queen takes. Ahan just exchanges off everything. And it's just a great position for him. Right? A full piece up. Can't ask for more in the third round of a tournament. Another exchange. I guess the king will come to f3. Ah, and now he wants to exchange of the rooks. Rook d1. Oh, he plays bishop d4. Okay, rook c1. Bishop e3. I would have thought he wants to play rook d1 or something before. Okay, king f3. King e4. Now the rook is too passive. White king will just uh, dominate the rook and the king. And the pawn, okay. Black tries to activate the rook somehow. It's better than rook e7. F6 is better. But a piece is a piece, right? White's a piece up. So Ahan just calmly plays and there black blunders the rook. See what happened here? He just played rook d5, blunting the rook, and uh, that's it. So one thing you notice here is uh, till this position, when he had a full piece up. But did he do anything complicated? He didn't. Ahan just played calm chess. Just sitting on the advantage. And when you sit on your advantage, your opponent auto automatically runs out of moves and he makes mistakes. That's what happened here. Now, just a matter of winning with an extra rook. And here, Yakin resigned. That was his third round game. Again, just like the first round, he won out of the opening. The opening helped him. Let's see fourth round, a very important round according to the tournament. This was again Samartha. Samartha was leading at that point, along with Ahan and a few others. Day two. Round number four. Ahan was black. E4, e e6. So we have a French defense from Ahan. A surprise. This is not something many people play in these tournaments. I think he's the first person to have played French in the summer tournaments. Pawn takes, pawn takes, knight c3, knight f6, knight f3, knight c6. They're just playing French like it's a normal e4, e5, Ecopian opening. In French, the Pawn has to go forward. In such positions, you want a knight to come to d7 and the pawn to go here. Bishop has to come out first. Then knight to d7, pawn c6, bishop e7, castles. That would be what you want. Not knight c6. Okay, bishop g5, bishop e7, bishop e2, h6, bishop h4, castles, castles, rook e8, h3, knight h7, asking for an exchange of bishops. Of course, he does that. Now the knight comes to f5. Oh, I thought the knight would come to f5. But g6 is also fine because it can jump, jump to f4 now. There is no dark squad bishop, so there will be no exchange. The knight will be good on f4. Exchange of rooks. Knight f6. Knight f6. Why? Why didn't he play knight f4? I thought that was the plan. Plays knight f6. Bishop takes. Pawn takes. Pawn structure is a little bad for black. So white has some advantage here. And queen just comes into a good square. Bishop f5. Rook c1. Queen d6. Queen takes, pawn takes, knight h4, king f7, knight takes. Ah, this was not really needed. I mean, I guess he wanted to just free up the rook. That's why he wanted to exchange of this bishop. But the other way to do with this would be to move the knight, say knight b5 with tempo, like this. Make black defend it, for example, like this. And then play pawn c c3. Then the rook is free to move. So uh, this knight h4 was not needed. Because it uh, unravels the pawn structure, straightens up the pawn structure of black. Right now they're double pawns. After knight takes the pawns, just as good as any other pawn. 
Now another exchange of rooks. This knight end game is basically just like a pawn end game. All knight end games are very similar to pawn end games. A more active king is the main thing you need. And here, uh, white is the one who has a more better position because the pawns are doubled for black. So just place king f1, pawn f3, a6, king up, a4, king up, king up, g5, taking space, f3. Yeah, this, this gives a lot of space to the black king. So Samartha should have played something along f4 himself just to stop black from playing f1 to gain some space. So here he allowed a lot of space for black pawns. The king can come to f5 and stay there. If you play g4, of course, pawn will take and then the pawns are broken. So it will be easy to target both of them. Right? For example, knight h5 check, king moves and then king f4. So one forward, king f2, king here, knight e2, h5, b3, h4, c3. Okay, that's a nice attempt to continue the game. Pawn takes, knight takes. Material is equal, position is also equal. But now black has some activity on this side, on the queen side. Inside is like closed. There's nothing black or white can do anything here. Now the shift happens to the queen side. Uh, white just waits, Samartha just waits to see what Ahan is doing. Ahan is doing something, now Samartha starts coming to the queen side. King d2. That was a nice maneuvering of the pieces from both people. And Ahan also comes to the queen side because there's nothing for him here. Right? He realizes that. Now he brings his king over. King here. But there is still no way to make any progress. Why doesn't want to play pawn c4 because that will straighten up the pawns for black. And black has nothing to do also. So after a couple of moves, they agreed to a draw in a perfectly equal position. So after four rounds, Ahan is on 3.5 out of 4. He was like third or fourth by this point. Now in the fifth round, he faced the, it's a very crucial round, right? Fifth round and sixth round, most crucial ga games. And here he faced Atik, 1378. Similar rating. Atik is a higher rating. Let's see what happened. E5, Knight of 3, Bishop, 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 Kiko, Piano. You can guess what he's going to play. Pawn takes and now he'll play E5. Let's see if Atik knew this opening, this line of Kiko, Piano. He has seen it several times before. But during the tournament, during an actual game, he just plays Knight E4. Which is basically a mistake because after D5, Pawn takes. He just plays pawn takes back. When I mean, you can play this line with knight e4, but you play, play it a little differently. That's a little complicated. If you play the normal way, this is just a full piece. At least he had to play out before taking back the pawn. He had to play something like pawn f5, maybe, or bishop f5, even better. And keep the piece. Latik just, just crumbles right in the fifth round. He plays a big mistake. And loses a full piece. From here, of course, there is no coming back. And this is just like the repeat of Yetin game, the third round game. So Ahan is basically winning three games out of the opening. Round number one, round number three, round number five, same opening line, same tricky line, and everybody falls for it. Even the top rated players are falling for it. And here he Atik again loses a piece. This is just uh, simple stuff for a hand to do, do now. Just exchange of everything and, uh, and now we have passed two pawns on the queen side. Of course, you don't want to allow something like rook d1, making it uncomfortable. It's still fine. You're up by two pieces, right? But still, it just doesn't allow that. And the pawns just steamrolls down the board. And rook check. And the pawn queens. Wait, this is a greediness. This is something that every chess player should have. That greedy nature to take more pieces. Like that hunger to win, if you will. But you want to take more and more. Here easily white can just play pawn h8. I mean, it doesn't matter here in this position. Whatever move he plays, it's winning. But you can see that trait here. Like you want to win more material. You don't want to simply make the easy move and win. You want to get more. 
That's what you see here in the champion's move. Knight g4, king f5, queens, bishop takes. Now it should be just an easy win. Of course, if uh, queen takes rook, is it a draw? No, it would not have been a steal. The king has e6 squared. But he just gives checkmate on queen e4. And here comes the last round, the crucial round. And this game I remember. How can you forget, right? This was a game where Ahan got really lucky. I mean, uh, there will be tournaments where you get really unlucky and you lose because you miss something or mouse slip or something. But here, Ahan had a lot of luck. But he played really good chess till now. And this last round, nerves come into play for both players. And Gajan is the one who doesn't hold his nerves. Let's see what happened. A lot of exchanges and then we go to an end game. And basically Ahan wins a pawn. Let me flip the board. Basically Ahan, Ahan wins a pawn here. After rook d4, pawn moves, rook d5. Here what should white have done? The threat is to this pawn. So maybe f4 is fine. Possible, right? Yeah, f4 is fine, but he played rook e3. Just giving up a pawn. Rajanan just drops a full pawn just like that. And then c6 and Han just holds the position. Knight comes to a very nice square. Exchange of bishops. Rook d5. Excellent. Not letting the white rook come down to the 7. Two pawns up. You can see Gajanan doing some good moves here. He's trying to make something happen on the queen side. And he almost succeeds, basically. He actually succeeds. Rook f5 is a mistake because rook c1 and this pawn can become a big problem for black. This pawn will fall. There's a nice move played by Gajan here. Rook b6. Threatening pawn c6. Rook c8. Rook takes pawn. And this position is just winning for Gajan. The winning move is just rook cb1. Simple. Right? Whatever move black plays, white plays rook b8 and you get a rook. But Gajanan missed it. He just played rook b6, king h7. Now the chance is gone. Now rook cb1 does not win because the king got to escape. There is no check on b8 after rook takes. Rook takes that. Rook a6, simply move the rook out of there. So rook b8 will not work because of rook takes e7. It goes back. Now the king comes in. This was a mistake by Ahan. Now we get to even the best players. Even the champion in this case. Rook a6. A3 check was a big mistake because the king just comes even further up. Now the rook has to come back because he has to stop rook b8. Rook comes back. Now the king comes to e5 and this position is gone. White simply wins here, right? Gajanan should have won this game. But, but then comes a tragic. This position is just one full rook up. Right? This position is completely winning. After a few moves. F6. E4. And here comes the tragic moment for Gajanan. He just plays pawn h4. And uh, that's it. That's a full rook. From what I understand, from what he told, he, he thought that he could run Gajan, Ahan out of time. Little bit of that. And yeah, he thought uh, something like <clears throat> and he played h4 and he just lost a full rook. King takes rook. And this position is just winning for black. He just promotes a pawn. And once you give somebody a chance like this, of course, they're gonna give checkmate. And that's it. And that's the moment Ahan became the champion. So, the only hiccup in the whole tournament for him was the last round where uh, he was losing at two particular points. Completely lost if Gajanan had found the two moves. And uh, he did find the second time, but, but then he did not finish it off. He made a blunder and Gave Ahan the chance. So that shows the unpredictable, unpredictability of the game that we play. And the champion ju just does not need good moves and uh, temperament. He also needs some little bit of luck sometimes. And that's how Ahan became a champion in the fourth summer tournament.